Hi, this is Rachel with Pure, and I am going to talk to you today about adding some gradient fills and some color fills and just ways to add a little bit of pop and a little bit of interest to your image, kind of tone it slightly, but uh, it'll just give you a little bit of artistic interest. Um, okay, so I have this image of my daughter. Um, it's got, you know, decent white ballads and, you know, there's some interesting color tones here. Um, interesting shadows and things like that, but it, it's, it could use a little bit of pop because I mean, we've got all of this lovely greenery that could be pop, excuse our halfway stained fence, but I think this is kind of a fun one because there is a lot begging to be brought out in this image and we can do this really quickly doing kind of a gradient color pop. So you're going to click on your gradient map over here. You can also choose it uh, from here. You can choose gradient map. You can choose it. There's a million different ways you can choose adjustments. I just usually come over here and choose this. Okay, so it's black and white, yeah. Whoops, Rachel, didn't pop it. No, actually, I meant to do this. So you're gonna come up where you have this little gradient and you're gonna click it and it opens the gradient editor. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna click the black end at the bottom, this little button here, and I'm going to say, okay, I kind of, this is what I like to do. This is my favorite gradient because I like, uh, as you probably noticed, uh, the little bit deeper, cooler, richer shadows, and then the warmer highlights on top. Um, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna go with that for right now. So you can try your own like, versions of this and say, okay, here, you're going, I don't know, this seems kind of like it's not working, <laughs> right? Okay, I say, okay, wait, all better, right? Perfect picture. No, <laughs> you're like, this is not better. This does not look good at all. Okay, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna come and turn to soft light, and you can see where we're getting here now. Like, it's it's a little over contrasty, because soft light can be a little hard can be like harsh. It says soft light, but it can kind of be a little crazy. But woof, look at that. Do you see? Like, I love it. I love this. I mean, and if I felt like, oh, maybe it's too much because she already has a little bit of rosy cheeks, like maybe it gave her too much, I could mask it off her face or wherever I want to. But look at this. I want you to pay attention to it. look at the browns and that bucket behind her suddenly goes from being kind of this washed out looking thing to it looks richer. It looks more interesting. The wood is interesting. The brick down here is interesting. The shadow down here is more interesting. All of it gains a richness that it didn't have before, but it doesn't pull her down into a darkening type of thing. It warms her and keeps her bright. So I love this. Even watch the chickens on her outfit. I mean, her outfit just, boom. I mean, it's it's more pop, more interest. And I I this is one of my favorite little tricks because it's a very quick edit that is almost completely done. Do you know what I mean? That just brings an enormous amount of oomph to an image. Um, so that's that's a fantastic little trick. So again, you're gonna do gradient map. Then I want you to click on the gradient up here. Then you're going to pick your colors down here and you can do whatever you want. I just happen to like this type of color scheming going throughout my image. I feel like it gives it a richness and a tonality that just draws my attention. But I mean, you could do just about anything. You could do an interesting cool on cool image with like some blues, like a dark blue and a lighter blue. You could do, you know, warms. You could do, you know, with like a, you know, maybe like a golden and a highlight. I mean, and, and you can play with these. And obviously you can play around with these things. I like uh, soft light because that's going to, uh, it keeps the color a little more out of here. If I pull it to hard light, watch her face. Woof. You see that highlight becomes much more dominant. It really dominates the image. Um, there's not really a lot of times I would use it on the hard light. Overlay does the same thing. It just is, it's much more aggressive. Overlay is more aggressive than soft light. It's just, that's just how it goes. Um, but you know, I mean, it can work. It does add an interesting element of sharpness. Um, screen kind of covers the whole image here. I don't love it, but as you can see, it adds the toning. It just adds almost like a haze, which is, I mean, sometimes haze is popular and light and kind of is the same thing, but it's pulling out those cooler tones. Um, do you see, it's just gone into the shadows. Um, so overall soft lights, my thing. I like it. It's what I like. Um, 
It just kind of hits the whole image just right for me when I'm doing this type of pop. But there, I mean, there are definitely, you can look at doing different things. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about adding a fill layer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to layer, new fill layer, solid color. Um, let me think through, like, I'll show you a few different type of fill layers that we can do. Um, the first one that I want to do here is I'm going to show you how to do a really interesting type of matte, matte being kind of an in thing. So I'm going to pick a grayish tone. It can be darker, it can be lighter, um, you know, middle ish gray and say, all right, that's what I'm looking at. And then I'm going to move it to lighten. And obviously it's like way too much at hundred percent. Yeah, like way too much. But as you see, like I'm kind of moving it around 20 and 30 and you kind of get that matted up look. Um, it's, it's a really, really simple type of matte. Um, especially if you're not comfortable overall using matte, like using, if you're just learning how to use um, maybe your curves or whatever, and you're not super comfortable, this is a really simple way, especially an image that has good contrast like this one. Um, really simple way to do it. It's just lighten with a gray color fill. And actually look, it doesn't even have to be gray. So again, like maybe I want those interesting bluer highlight or uh, shadows in, in the lighten. I've almost got kind of a bluish toned matte, uh, or I could make it a warm toned matte, kind of like a brown toned matte there, as you can see. So you can just infinitely pick these colors. So maybe working in the brown tones, we could say, you know what, let's come over to soft light. And you know what it's going to do, right? It's going to give it that pop. Um, so again, adjusting at 22%, that seems, you know, pretty good. If, you know, if it's too much in the faces, you can take it off, but watch, I mean, the mountains, they get a little more pop. Everything gets a little bit more pop and a little bit more color. The brown brings some really nice stuff into the grass. Um, but again, you know, I mean, we could come into it with the purples if we wanted a little bit of a cooler image, uh, you know, in the blues, it's definitely cool. So, I mean, there's just a lot that you could do with the color fills. Let me, let me bring it back to kind of We'll go back to, okay, something a little less wild and crazy. Um, so we can talk through, again, overlay, that makes it stronger. So you may have to tone it down because it's a little crazy. Screen, uh, in this instance, it's not going to be super duper crazy. It kind of brightens up the whole image and just brings an interesting tone to it. Um, it's not getting in specific highlights or shadows. So maybe if I felt like I needed to warm this image up, I mean, I've kind of done that because it went from being kind of a cooler image to when I've done this, it's added an interesting highlight and it's brightened things up. I could turn it down a little bit if I so desired and said, okay, you know, now I've warmed it up and I've given it a little bit of a different color. I mean, maybe if I went a little more golden, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can go with this, um, you know, a deeper red. So some of these images, um, it, a lot of it will depend on how much, if you notice, it really gets in there and works and works on this image because there's a lot of dark tones. All these clothes are dark tones. There's this kind of dark things, but it doesn't really hit. If you'll watch, it doesn't hit the highlights a lot, but since there's not a blown out sky and things, there's a lot that it does get in and really kind of work on. These tend to work. As you can see, I'll turn it up so you can see better. Um, this is on the screen. So it goes a little bit more over the whole image, but it still doesn't hit the lighter areas as much as it hits the darks. Soft light is a little more equal opportunity, if you see. Uh, soft light definitely more equal opportunity. Lighten, uh, that's really only going to hit a few areas. Like it's pretty. It just goes right for those shadows, if you see. So um, so it's gonna depend on the kind of image that you have. I'm not gonna leave this on Lighten. Um, but that's why this that's why Lighten works so nicely for matting because it specifically targets those shadows. So soft light, uh, turn it way down, you know, and you've got a little bit of a color pop again. Just an interesting little tonal shift to the image. Um, I think it looks pretty good with the skin tones and it could totally work here. This image was a little bit cool because it was super, super cloudy, but hey, any day that you can get all eight kids looking, bam, that's a good day and we take it. Um, so this one is just a picture of my son and my husband like 
hanging out building my garden boxes. Um, but I thought this would be a good one to show you how when you have a really bright image, this has a lot of bright area in it and it's not going to play the same as other images. You're going to go, oh, huh, interesting. So really bright images don't work nearly the same. Um, so let's come into layer, new fill layer, solid color. And this, this, this really goes the same for if we would have chosen a gradient. Um, this doesn't have a whole ton. So, you know, if I was going to go in and say, okay, let's do that lighten trick. Um, this one, it does go into the shadows a bit, but not nearly as much as the other one did. When I turn it down to the same spot, I mean, you really can almost not tell very much because the whole image is so light. So let's change this color. Um, let's put it into maybe that brownish tone. Um, and you know, I mean, it kind of brightens up the area, but see, it's working on those shadows and there's just not a lot of shadows. This is a lot more highlights and midtones, as you can tell here, not a lot of shadows. So coming into soft light, a little more equal opportunity, right? It boosts up that color because it was kind of a little bit washed out. So, I mean, it helps there. I mean, we definitely got a zing, but it's not the same type of effect that we've been getting with the other type of images. So I want you to notice that when you're adding color fill, when you're adding these different layers, it totally depends on the type of image that you're using. So bear that in mind as you play around with this type of color popping and toning of your image. Thanks so much. Have a great day.